the largest lab in the world studying the breakdown of matter. They are researching and experimenting at the frontier of particle physics to understand what exactly happened during the Big Bang and what shapes the natural laws of our universe. But simultaneously, they're bringing artists into their labs to collaborate. When I found this out, I was shocked. I'd always seen the worlds of art and science at odds. Back in middle school, my peers and I were taught that the left side of the brain was used for scientific and deductive reasoning, while the right side was used for creativity. I knew some people were better at science and some people were better at art, but I hardly ever saw these people doing both or even working together. So I was personally worried that I was right-brained because I loved art. This thinking inhibited my confidence in science courses, and it's likely one of the reasons that I'm studying film today. But this summer, I went to CERN, the Center for Nuclear and Particle Physics Research in Geneva, Switzerland, and I witnessed their efforts to reconcile this divide. I learned that art and science can have a symbiotic relationship, and when they do, the outcomes are incredible. I also learned that if we don't embrace interdisciplinary collaborations, we won't be prepared for the out-of-the-box thinking required to solve some of the most challenging issues of our time. We only understand about 4% of what the universe is made of. This statistic comes from researchers at CERN. My journey of discovery began last fall. Monica Bello, the curator and director of arts at CERN, spoke at an exhibition I attended, and she explained that our world needs radical thinkers, and CERN is working to support these thinkers through artistic residencies. In 2011, they embarked on a new cultural endeavor, forming an artist-in-residency program that's evolved into an arts program of its own right. CERN hosts artists from all over the world. They work alongside physicists, cosmologists, theorists, and data scientists to learn about the experiments in progress. Eventually, the artists create pieces which explore these complex processes of particle physics, from works of visual media, to choreographies, to holograms, the public can then interact with the science from CERN through these traveling art exhibitions. After hearing about this program firsthand, I wondered about the underlying motivations of arts at CERN. I'd never thought critically about how we've separated these fields as a society. I wondered what expectations were for artists. Were they supposed to explain science through their art? Was it easy for physicists and artists to communicate? I wanted to explore CERN from an artist's eyes to see how these residencies inspired their work. So I interviewed with the director, asking if I could make a film about these very questions. The purpose of the documentary is to show those who have similar fears as I did in sixth grade how artists and scientists can collaborate. And even though I came into this knowing very little about professional art or professional physics, I took my newcomer's point of view as a lens for the documentary. After securing a grant from Tough Summer Scholars, in May of last year, I set off to CERN. I filmed for four weeks in their labs, interviewing artists and scientists, absorbing and asking questions. This science research center is supporting the arts. This is super amazing. In the United States, we almost always see support for science trump support for art. As we well know, there's a cultural perception of scientists as practical and logical, and artists as idealist and emotional, in a society that may overvalue rationality and productivity. This program is supporting the, these interdisciplinary collaborations between arts and science because they, the CERN community believes it's important. It was an incredible experience to spend every day exploring CERN's campus of unbelievable experiments, from particle colliders to antimatter detectors. I literally went 300 feet underground to film and photograph some of the most high-tech research equipment ever created by man. Artists would ask questions about how machinery was designed or specifics about a concept that they were researching. Likewise, scientists inquired about the interests and work of the artists, intrigued by the mediums that they used. Nicole Louis-Lier, an interdisciplinary sound artist, liked to interact with the soundscapes of the spaces we visited, later composing a collective sound piece. She often played the equipment that we saw like a drum to check the object's resonance. Some scientists thought this was funny, and some were puzzled. What could she hear that they couldn't? Nicole's electromagnetic sound antenna sparked questions from physicists about the hidden soundscapes of their work environment. It's a device which collects electromagnetic frequencies and transmits that data to her audio recorder. At times, she even handed her headphones over to scientists so that they could hear the raw sounds she was collecting. One of the 
most interesting interactions I witnessed was when a scientist showed the artist a mini pix. This device was engineered at CERN and can be plugged into any computer to show how particles leave tracks as they move through physical spaces. The scientist plugged it in and displayed this image on a large screen at the front of the room. The MiniPix has a small sensor which captures data from different types of particles penetrating its surface and displays what those tracks look like. It was like a piece of art was created in front of our eyes. I mean, isn't it kind of beautiful? Well, the scientists were definitely surprised by the beauty we saw in their method. And most scientists seem to enjoy this method of engaging with their work from an artist's perspective. Some also deeply appreciate the methodological research and time that it takes for artists to create their works. One cosmologist, Danielle Figueroa, explained to me that CERN is about providing scientific knowledge to society while also engaging with other agents of society, such as these artists, who uniquely approach human expression. A few scientists also told me that they admire the way that artists are able to wonder without restraint and hope to bring that into their own pursuits of discovery. On the last day, Nicole showed her work to one of the leading theoretical researchers. He said it was very cute and went on his way. I realized that not all scientists think that the work of the artist is as important as their own. And maybe this is a reason for the historic divide between these two disciplines. But more often than not, I saw artists and scientists engaging in discussions and embracing their differences. I originally thought that the primary focus of this program was to explain science through art. But I was wrong. The program director made it very clear that there was no expectation for artists to communicate science through their work. The program exists to support art for the sake of art. This being said, <laughs> artists are some of the most impressive observers. They take what they see and transduce knowledge to society through alternative mediums. One example of this is a production called Halo by UK artist duo Semiconductor. Halo is an immersive method of engaging with the data from Atlas, the largest volume particle detector ever created. Halo is a cylindrical space with a 360 degree projection of the data from Atlas, while an array of 384 vertical wires are played by that same data to produce sound. Artists work with scientists to accurately create an experience of this data. Both physicists and artists have to er, pursue questions that, are that encompass themes that are much bigger than the details of our everyday lives. Monica explains that artists also come to CERN with fundamental questions of the universe. And while scientists are working to solve, find answers to these big questions, they have to surpass traditional problem solving. And this is where artists come in. They develop approaches and connections previously unexplored. High-level scientists must be able to think creatively, embracing both the abstract and logical wisdom contained in two halves of the same brain. One study I looked at surveyed 61 artists and scientists and found that both work very well in a coalition of other creatives. These people benefit from collaborations where flows of creativity are natural and not forced. So it makes sense to bring artists to CERN, not just to be inspired, but to inspire. The works that artists produce are physical and lasting artifacts of human development and representations of where we are in our journey of scientific discovery. As science and technology progress, the artists capture these changing landscapes in their work. And generations later, people can interact with these pieces of art, which are emblematic of where we were at the time of the piece's creation. In many ways, these residencies are part of the pioneering movement in which science and art can be practiced simultaneously and encourage the advancement of the other. At Tufts, we have renowned programs of arts and STEM education that if intertwined could lead to important discoveries in academic work. So what does this mean for you? STEM students, reach out to SMFA students, and vice versa. Seek out interdisciplinary projects. Maybe even test out your own scientific or creative sides. If we take time to listen to and appreciate those in other disciplines, we open ourselves to unique opportunities to advance our knowledge. As a university, Tufts could be taking action too. They could offer more interdisciplinary courses and encourage project development across disciplines. They could host a cross-department event, such as a hackathon that includes design, film, music, performing arts, engineering, and computer science. We should be researching how we can propel students into a world where there are hardly ever clear lines between disciplines. The founder of Arts at CERN proposed this program with one simple equation. Art plus science plus technology equals culture. As we move forward into an increasingly technological world, 
many disciplines will require collaborations between fields to innovate and disseminate knowledge. And while physics could, of course, just exist as physics, it would be useless to the rest of the population without people who could incorporate those findings into products, textbooks, and artwork to be enjoyed and interpreted. And art is specifically key because it breathes life and emotion into the work of other fields. In his book, Living Philosophies, Albert Einstein writes, in art and in the higher ranges of science, there is a feeling of harmony which underlies all endeavor. There is no true greatness in art or science without the sense of harmony. So, for the sake of future discovery, let's embrace this reconciliation between art and science. Thank you. <laughs>